Aria, the music sampler developed by Plogue and the Garretton Corporation. The audio engine for all of the Garretton musical libraries, now including the Garretton World Collection. Here's how the bagpipes demo for World was created. Clicking in the black box under the word Ensemble in the upper left-hand corner of Aria brings up lists of ensemble templates, groupings of instruments ready to be used in projects. From the list of World Ensembles, we'll choose number 30, Piping Hot. All of the bagpipes are instantly loaded for us in Aria. The controls in Aria's mixer have also been preset for us. Various volume levels, different panning positions, and various amounts of send. We're going to customize this preset, first emptying slot number 6, the melodica. We want to increase the number of bagpipes. All we have to do is go to each empty slot, use the cascading menu, and under Europe's winds, we'll find bagpipes. After choosing an instrument from that folder, we can now use these little arrows to go forwards and backwards, filling out the rest of our slots with more bagpipes. We want some basic percussion in this track, and so once again going to the World Instruments menu, we're going to Percussion, we're going to use an Odaiko and a Bodrin. Now that we have all of our instruments, we'll start auditioning them. This is the purpose of Aria's virtual keyboard. We're getting a good idea of the characteristic sound of each bagpipe. The red notes switch to different samples. This is bending up. And switching again, now we have a sample that bends down. Some of these instruments will be used just for the drone, and some will be used for the melody. Aria has 16 stereo audio channels. Clicking here, we can choose a channel for each instrument. The channels have two numbers, one for the left and one for the right. Choosing 3 slash 4 gives us the second stereo channel. The numbers to the right are the 16 MIDI channels. For this project, we're going to bypass the controls in ARIA to get a straight signal into our recording program, Sonar. But if we wanted, we could use the effects in ARIA like this. Choosing effects on the right-hand side, we get to ambiance, the built-in reverb in ARIA. The default settings for the controls are a good starting point. You can change them, experiment, until you like what you hear. On the mixer, we can use the send knobs, and that gets part of the signal to the reverb unit. Clicking effects again, we can choose a different room. On the controls page, let's experiment with vibrato. That's with none. Turning this knob up, there we have a heavy vibrato. Off again. That's controlled by aftertouch. The knob is just for auditioning the effect. MIDI controller 17 controls the speed. Very slow vibrato. Bagpipes seem best without vibrato, but at least we tried it out. Stereo stage. This is a more subtle effect. Let's listen to it on and off. It gives a fullness to the sound with early reflections. Now, let's try auto legato. With my keyboard, I'm able to play a trill. With it off, we're playing polyphonically. And we can't do trills. Monophonic playback will be good for this. With the project laid out, now we're going to YouTube. We're looking for a guide, an example to show us what a bagpipe band really sounds like. Bagpipes is a good search term. And after looking a while, we choose this one. Scotland the Brave, played by the Highland Mist Pipe Band. This will work fine, even though it's a noisy recording. There are various download helping programs. Firefox has a download helper. It automatically starts spinning when there's media playing. We choose this to keep in our project folder. The default format is MP4. We want to convert that format. Sonar likes AVIs. Well, WinX HD is a free utility. There are many. It works very easily. In the download helper, I right click to open the containing folder, simply drag, the mp4 into the converter. 
These default settings work pretty well. I direct it to where I want, converting it to AVI, and then deleting the MP4 from the folder, since we don't need that. Now, back in Sonar, we open up a new project. When a video file is dragged and dropped into a new Sonar project, the soundtrack is all that's brought in. By importing, I could have both visuals and sound, but we only need the soundtrack. Now we'll check the results. Yeah, that'll be fine. That's what we'll play along with. After taking a guess at the tempo, we can lock that down even better so it's easier to play along with. Right there, we can find the beginning of a measure. But it's before the measure in the timeline. In Sonar, if we right-click at that point, we can set the measure or beat at now. The audio and the timeline are now more synchronized, so we can use a metronome. We'll do that for the rest of the song, and then we'll have a tempo map we can work with. No matter what recording software you use, you need to set up your MIDI tracks. In Sonar, this is very simple. We just need to make sure each MIDI track is directed towards ARIA and to the various MIDI channels. Now I will start rehearsing the piece, listening to the playback of the video soundtrack. When we're ready, we'll record the first phrase, remembering that we don't need to record the whole song in one go. We can assemble the project from as many clips as we need. This is the piano roll view in Sonar, similar to many other programs. The first step before editing is to turn that grid off. With it on, the notes and your edits would all snap perfectly to the note value, which is unnatural. We can see some notes are early, some too early. We just need to make some adjustments. It's already getting better. We need to start focusing on the nuances that make this or any other instrument unique. As with some other wind instruments, it's the addition of grace notes that makes the instrument come to life. We can add those in the piano roll view. Some can be quite a distance from the following note. We need to pay attention to the velocity values also. Changing that to a low value, you can hear the softer attack. We'll need most of our notes fairly high. The volume for many Garretton instruments is controlled by CC1. Controller 1 from the modulation wheel. Here we are recording it. You can see the data in the lower part of the piano roll view. On the control page, you can see the mod wheel button responding. But this isn't the right sound for bagpipes. We'll erase all that data. Now, after editing our notes, we'll check the entire track with the recording. Now we're going to add the drone. We'll keep each note approximately two measures, and with all the notes starting ahead of the beat. That compensates for the way it takes the drone a while to reach its pitch. Bending the pitch is used sparingly on this and on the melody track. The drum pattern. We can do that very simply with our two chosen drums. So now we have one melody track, one drone, and the percussion. As soon as we copy and paste that melody track into another bagpipe, we start to get the sound we want. So we paste copies of the melody into some tracks, copies of the drone into others, until we have all 16 MIDI tracks. Using one copy as an example, here's how we'll humanize all of the copies. Pressing Ctrl plus F1 brings up a CAL directory in Sonar. These are automated editing utilities. Every program has something like them. Random time is what we want. We'll type in a value of 65. Other tracks can be 70, 45, 75, mixing it up. We check the results in the piano roll view, and we see that the notes have been each individually randomly shifted. We'll do more edits by hand here and there, relying on our ears for what sounds best. All of the MIDI tracks have been randomized and hand edited. Below them are the audio tracks, which are hooked up to the ARIA, and the MIDI tracks. Now, we want to bounce all of these tracks to audio. 
Holding down the shift key, we select the first track and then the last audio track. All the MIDI and all of the audio tracks are now selected. Under Edit, we select the Bounce to Track dialog. Now, we want individual tracks, not the entire mix. We can see in the window now that all of the tracks indeed are selected. There's no harm in just leaving everything checked and saying OK. Now we can mix the project totally in the realm of audio. Above our new recordings, we still have the MIDI tracks and their associated audio tracks. We want to mute and archive them. We select Tracks in the toolbar. We click Mute. All of the tracks are muted. Now we choose Archive, and all of the tracks are archived. Expanding the tracks, we can see with the lit up A and M that indeed everything is archived and muted. We don't need to use ARIA anymore, so we go to the synth rack, click the button on the far left, and when the parentheses appear, that means that now that is offline, not taking up CPU power. We want to clean up the view on our screen. We click Track Manager or push M on the computer keyboard. We use the space bar to uncheck all of those tracks, push OK, and now they're out of view. Here we are on the track view again with nothing but the audio tracks in view. In the mixer, known as the console view, we start setting up what we want to have happen with our audio tracks. We'll play around until we find levels we like for each instrument and different locations in the panorama. Pan pots. Also, up here, we'll send different amounts of the signal to the reverberation bus. As with all of these settings, it's a matter of experimenting to see if it sounds right. We choose where the signal is going from this menu, reverb, that's what we want. On the right side of the mixer, we've set up a master and a bus with the reverb plugin. We turn on the EQ section of the master and play around until we find a setting that emphasizes the nasality of the bagpipes even more. Finding an equalization setting that benefits a project is always a matter of trial and error. In the effects bin of the reverb bus, we've added a reverb plugin, adding a little bit of pre-delay and adjusting the other controls until we like the sound. We're going to add a little bit of automation to the project. We make sure that the master can read and write automation. This is a matter of moving the controls while a project is playing. In the track view, we push the bus tab so we can see the master and later the reverbs faders. All we need to do, hover our cursor over this control and as the project plays back, you can see the automation being recorded. This is a fade up. Our goal is to have our bagpipe band come in from the left. So here is another envelope that we've recorded of the panning position, starting at far left and going to center. And here's the effect of that. The reverb bus has also been automated so that it starts off with more reverb and it gets less as the band supposedly gets closer to us. The more reverb, the farther away. Now the entire mix, which we export as a two-track master. Now, go get your hands on the world. world.